Hola amigos, bienvenidos. Hey guys, welcome back to the Language Tutor Spanish series. I'm your profesor de español, Danny Evans. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me here on this episode. Well, I've been telling you here on YouTube and also on the podcast, I've been saying that many more good, really awesome tenses are coming up in the future. And guess what? On this episode, we're gonna learn a new tense, a new way to use verbs. It's gonna be really cool. I'm excited about teaching you this because we're now getting into some compound tenses. You know, there are basically seven simple tenses, seven compound tenses, that's 14 total. At some point, you just kind of start using some of the same parts over again, just in different ways. So, you know, somebody, I think I've mentioned this before, somebody said, wow, there are really that many tenses? Yes, but we're just kind of using the same stuff in different ways. So no big deal. But I am excited because today, this is the present perfect indicative. Okay, and, and what that means is that you're saying something has been done. So I just want to give you some examples here on the screen right here, just so you can see the English version of present perfect indicative. Okay, so you go, oh, that, that's what we're talking about. All right, here's one. We have eaten. All right. So we're using the verb have, but it's, it's really an auxiliary verb. It's not like something I physically have, right? Okay, it, in English, it just happens to be the same verb. But we're saying we have, and then we're using that past participle, eaten. It's been done. So we have eaten, that's present perfect indicative. Also, you can say she has lived in Barcelona. She has lived in Barcelona, she has done that, okay? Uh, here's another one, they have finished. They have finished. It has been done, okay? And let's give one more. I have studied a lot, all right? That has been done. I have done that. I have studied a lot. All right, so how do we form the present perfect indicative in Spanish? Well, we're going to first put up the chart right here, and I'm going to give you the verb have as an auxiliary verb because it's not going to be tener. Tengo, tienes, tiene. We don't use that, that's not the same verb. That's we physically have something, right? Okay, this is that auxiliary. So here's what it's gonna look like. Up here in the top left, saying I have done something, that have is gonna be e, H-E. That's it. So yo e, I have, and in a minute we're gonna talk about how to do those past participles. The tu form is gonna be as, H-A-S. Now down here in the bottom left, the el, ella, usted form is going to be a, okay? <clears throat> the nosotros form up there is hemos, H-E-M-O-S, hemos. And then that vosotros form is habéis, with that accent on the e, habéis. And then finally down there at the bottom right, the ellos, ellos, ustedes form of that verb is an, okay? They have or you have, ustedes form. Okay, so, e, as, a, hemos, habéis, an. So, go ahead and kind of lock those in, all right? And we will now talk about the past participles. Now, there's a general rule for it. So, we can have a good start on a lot of verbs by learning the general rule. For AR verbs, we simply take off the AR and we put this on there. Ado. A-D-O. So here's an example. I have spoken. Spoken would be hablado. Hablado. Okay. Now you can apply ado to most AR verbs, unless they're irregular. Okay. But you can apply ado to most AR verbs, and that will get you the past participle of tons of AR verbs right off the bat. Now let's talk about ERs and IRs, because we know they like to hang out and share the same stuff. For ERs and IRs, we're going to use this, ido, I-D-O. Okay, so we have eaten. Eaten is comido. All right. Now, I bet you're already putting those things in, together in your head and forming the present perfect indicative. But let's put it all together. Okay, let's go back to those sentences that we were talking about a while ago. We have eaten. Okay, we have eaten. Nosotros. 
hemos comido. Nosotros hemos comido. We have eaten. All right, that's how we do it. Let's look at those other examples, though. She has lived in Barcelona, or Barcelona, as some people like to say. Okay, ella ha vivido en Barcelona. Ella ha vivido en Barcelona. All right, let's go to that other one. The next one we talked about. They have finished. They have finished, okay? Ellos han, now the verb finish is terminar. Ellos han terminado. Ellos han terminado. They have finished. I have studied a lot, okay? I bet you're probably already doing this in your head right now. Yo he estudiado mucho. Yo he estudiado mucho. And there you have it. I have studied a lot. Okay, guys, that's how we do the present perfect indicative. Now, you're probably saying, oh, that was the end of the lesson. Okay, he's going to close out and say practice. Well, unfortunately, we have some troublemakers, right? You always got to deal with those troublemakers in learning another language. You got the rule and then you got the rule breakers. Well, there are some irregular past participles, okay? Now, sure, you can write these down right now and you can make notes and all of that. Once you get them down, the best thing to do is use them over and over and over again until they are natural, okay? So but let's talk about those irregulars really quick. Now, first of all, I want to talk about certain verbs, and this is kind of a general rule for you. So now if, if an ER or an IR verb, all right, the stem of that verb ends with a vowel, Okay, so ER and IR verbs, if the stem ends in a vowel, the past participle is going to have an accent, okay, over the I to maintain the right stress when you say the word. Because, you know, when we have different syllables, the rules change. It's like when you say a, a word with three syllables, you stress the middle syllable unless there's an accent to tell us differently. So sometimes the accents are there to say, hey, I know what you're thinking, but this one's going to be a little different. All right, so uh, just one more time, you know that E-R-I-R verb, the stem of it ends in a vowel, that past participle is gonna have an accent over the I to maintain the right stress when you say it. Now you're going, okay, give me an example, right? I'm gonna give you se several examples and you might just wanna kind of jot these down. <clears throat> the, the verb um, to attract, okay? To attract is atraer, atraer, E-R verb. Now, when you're using the past participle, attracted, it becomes atraído, atraído, okay? This is, it's kind of helping you maintain the right stress in the right syllable, atraído, okay? The verb to fall is caer, caer, all right? So fallen, someone has fallen, again, accent is caído, caído. So we've taken off that ER, we've put the ido on there because it's an ER verb, but it's just saying, hey, that stress goes on that I, so it's caído. All right, here's another one. Believe is creer, creer. All right, taking off the ER, now we're putting the ido on there because it's an ER, putting the accent on there. Creído, creído. All right, let's just keep going. We've got several more I want to give you that are under, under this same category. To read is leer, so the past participle would be leído, leído. To hear is oír, oír, all right? So the past participle heard would be oído, oído. Now to possess is poseer, poseer. So possessed, someone has possessed something, poseído, poseído. Now, to laugh is reír, reír. So you can imagine, someone has laughed, reído, reído. Now, to smile is sonreír, sonreír. So the past participle is sonreído, sonreído. I want to give you one more, okay? Bring is traer, traer. 
to the past participle. Traído. Traído. All right. Now, really quick, there's, there's an exception to that rule. I mean, yeah, we've got troublemakers. Now we've got exceptions to the troublemakers. Okay, if it's a verb that ends with U-I-R, okay, then you don't have to put an accent on the I. <clears throat> Here's an example. Destruir, to destroy. Destruir, okay? So that past participle will be destruido. So we don't, we don't really have an accent there, all right? Not necessary. Destruido, okay. Well, we still got a little bit more to cover with this. All right, now some common irregular uh, past participles, um, I, I want to just kind of give you a list of those. These are just common irregulars. Um, the first one is the verb abrir, so opened. You know, it's not abrido, it's abierto, abierto, all right? Dead, uh, to die is morir. Dead is actually muerto, muerto. Return, remember we talked about this a long time ago in stem changing verbs. Return is volver, okay? And you would say it's volvido, right? No, it's vuerto, vuerto, V-U-E-L-T-O. Now, the, the verb hacer, to do or to make, its past participle is going to be hecho, hecho. And you'll see this a lot on packing boxes, hecho in Mexico or you know, any kind of telling you where it was made or whatever. Okay, now to see is ver, its past is going to be visto, past participle is visto. I have seen that, visto. The verb uh, to absolve is absorber, absorber, that is absuerto, absuerto, okay? Resolved is going to be the, around the same thing. So that is resolver, resolver. So you're going to kind of do the same thing, resuerto, resuerto. The verb to put is poner, all right? Past participle, puesto, puesto. To satisfy, satisfacer, satisfacer. Past participle is satisfecho, satisfecho. Cover, to cover something is cubrir. Its past participle is cubierto, cubierto. All right, now to say is decir. Past participle is dicho, dicho. Okay, got, got, got a few more for you still here, okay? To break something is romper, romper. Its past participle is roto, R-O-T-O, -O, roto. To write is escribir. Its past participle is escrito, escrito. To discover is descubrir. And its past participle is descubierto, descubierto. <clears throat> All right. I think that's enough of those irregulars right now. Now, next up. I want to do one more thing with you on this episode. There are some words that are very typically confused in Spanish. They're confused with the adjectives. The past part is like, is this the past participle or is this the adjective? You know, it's, it's hard to say. So I want to go through a list of words <clears throat> that give you both. Okay. So... I'm going to give you uh, the verb itself, you know, what it means, then the verb, and then I'm going to give you both forms, okay, the adjective and the past participle, so that you're not confusing the two, okay? <clears throat> so the first one is to attend, which is atender, atender. Now the adjective is atento, atento, but the past participle is atendido, atendido, okay? So you say uh, in, in a sentence, if you're using that as an adjective, you know, attentive, then it would be atento. But someone has attended, atendido. All right. Now let's go to the next one. Uh, this was a good one because it, to bless is bendecir. And this one is often confused. It really is. Um, the adjective is bendito, bendito. 
in the past participle is bendecido. Bendecido. Okay. Now to confuse is confundir. Confundir. Adjective is confuso. Confuso. And the past participle is confundido. All right. Next one to corrupt is corromper. Corromper. Now the adjective is corrupto. Corrupto. And the uh, past participles, corrompido. Corrompido. Now we've learned when we did stem changing and reflexive, uh, we've learned the verb despertar, which means to wake up or to awaken. So saying someone is awake, you know, adjective form, despierto, okay, but someone has awoken one's self or someone, despertado is the past participle, despertado. Now, to curse is maldecir, maldecir, okay, the adjective is mardito, mardito. The past participle is mardecido. Mardecido. Now to possess is poseer. Poseer. The adjective is poseso. Poseso. And the past participle is poseído. Poseído. There we go with that I. Okay. And to presume is presumir. Presumir. The adjective presunto. Presunto. And the past participle Presumido, presumido. To suspend is suspender, suspender. Adjective, suspenso. And past participle, suspendido. All right, and guys, that's a lot of information for one lesson. But I think that what you might want to do is start with the basics of, you know, the idol, the idol getting down those past participles, um, just using them in general in the present perfect indicative, and then start bringing in those exceptions to the rules, the irregulars, and the exceptions to the irregulars, the GUI. Okay, so take it step by step and practice and then get it firm and then bring in something else and practice and get it firm. It's not gonna be a problem. You guys can do this so easily, you got it down, okay? All right, guys. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Keep on practicing, and I'll see you next time on the Language Tutor Spanish. Hasta pronto. Friends, thanks for watching the Language Tutor. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave it in the comment section below the video. And please click subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll never miss any of our language lessons.